Good morning. Morning. This is the regular meeting of, for October 21st of the Tompkins County Facilities and Infrastructure Committee. Uh, I have Dan Klein and Glenn Morey and myself here in the uh, chambers. I see Ann Corman and Dave there. Yes, he's there. Got to find you. You're right in the middle, Dave. There's Dave McKenna. He's our other member. So we're all here. That's good. Uh, changes to the agenda. Ann Corman uh, suggested that she'd like to bring forth uh, a uh, resolution. Ann, do you want to? Uh, you want that on the agenda for discussion? Yes, I would. Do you want me to say anything about that now, or you want? No, we'll uh, we'll do it later. Uh, then we get down to the highway department. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, looks like we have some public comments this morning. And uh, Mike, do you have to vote to add it to the agenda? I don't think so. You can okay. by consensus, or you can make a motion if you'd like. So I guess it's, is there anyone opposed to having a discussion about that on the agenda? No. Doesn't seem to be, so. Thank we'll you. Proceed. Yeah, I, I don't think we, we normally move to add it on the uh, committee agendas. We certainly do that on the legislature when there's something that comes up. Uh, Kathy, who's first? Uh, Lori Schneider. Morning, Lori. Gotta unmute yourself. Okay, good morning. I didn't realize I'd be the first speaker. Okay. Um, I support this resolution that Ann Corman has put together. And uh, basically, I just want to say that it has been the tradition and custom that the county legislature would support 20% match for federal projects. And uh, this has been paid uh, in the past. And to change the rules or the uh, pattern uh, halfway through a process would be unfair and hinder projects in the future that are seeking federal funding. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, the uh, resolution of the design of the bridge and freeze road. And it's not just about freeze road, but it's all future projects uh, that would have federal funding or bridge New York funding. Um, so we need to, you know, have this resolved. And uh, so the, the projects can go forward and get finished no longer in a timely manner, but get finished anyway. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Certainly, thank you for coming this morning. Who's next, Jim? Uh, Jim Scaley. Jim Scaley, a uh, member of the Dryden Town Board. Uh, good, <clears throat> good morning, uh, and uh, thank you uh, for allowing me to speak. Um, uh, and I'm speaking, personally, but also uh, as a member of the town board, uh, although I believe Dan Lamb is, is also planning to speak as well. Uh, we have reviewed the both the initial resolution that uh, uh, Jeff Smith, the highway, put forward, and, and, and now the slightly amended version that Ann Gorman has uh, presented. And um, it's been discussed um, at quite length already in terms of the, the uh, uh, main points. And this, is, this would then uh, create a policy for the uh, county legislature to follow in the future. So uh, with the pending infrastructure bills coming down from Congress, uh, this would likely allow for uh, more proposals uh, in the future and that uh, municipalities could then uh, take on the role of uh, uh, 
application and initial cost uh, to uh, uh, get these bridge projects underway, relieving that effort uh, on the part of the county highway. So it just makes uh, a lot of sense to uh, have this policy in place and move it forward. So I would urge the committee to uh, take up uh, Ann Gorman's uh, resolution and, uh, and vote on it uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, we appreciate it. Uh, who's next? Uh, Dan Lamb. Dan Lamb, uh, Deputy Supervisor, Town of Dryden. Yeah, thank you very much, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad to see this uh, resolution drafted by Ann Corman. I, I think this is exactly the type of policy that uh, the county needs to put in place to both incentivize and to uh, empower municipalities to seek this bridge New York funding, which is federal funding that will only boost all our uh, road and, and uh, or particularly our bridge rehabilitation projects in, in the in the county. So this allows the county and the towns to really cast the, the net as wide as possible to secure this uh, funding and to, to, uh, to know that you know, the county will pick up this small local share that really is a burden on, on the towns and, and villages to try and uh, uh, cover that. We would have to bond in most cases to cover this local share. And so you want to incentivize that. I think it's exactly the type of policy uh, we need. And we don't want additional hurdles put in place for, for municipalities when they get this funding. Um, the idea that there, there would be some sort of local review in addition to what the state and the feds put us through is just untenable. Um, you know, we, we've been struggling with this freeze road bridge project for several years because of the, all this review that occurs at the state level. Uh, I hope we're close to the end on, on that, but it's a long process. And uh, with our, our limited capacity to you know, uh, review these things ourselves and, and to um, put in the time, we really don't need another hurdle put in place. So I thank Anne for, for putting together this uh, resolution. It's, it's exactly what we need. And um, I appreciate this time to comment on it. Thank you, Dan. Uh, who else? Oh, I had signed uh, up. I have a hand from uh, Greg Mezzi. Greg, would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, if I could. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't email them. Uh, I'd like to speak uh, earlier, but if, if I could take a few minutes, I'd appreciate it. We, we allow three minutes. All right, great. Thank you. Um, first, Greg Mezzi, uh, resident town of Dryden, and also a candidate for uh, legislative district thirteen. Um, I wanted to come today and, and express my support for this resolution and thank Ann for putting it forward. Um, I think it's really important uh, in, in these times, especially to send the right message to our local partners, our local governmental partners, that we trust the work that they do. We trust our state partners to work together to find ultimately what the best solution is for their local municipalities. I think it's also important that um, this is a great opportunity for the county to relieve a large financial burden through the um, Bridge New York program, um, where we have essentially our local partners uh, doing the legwork, right, and, and putting, up, putting up those funds and, and what they're doing here is as asking to reimburse. And I, I'm sure there's many other local uh, municipalities that are, that are watching this process uh, right now and saying, you know, hey, should, should we go through with this, right? Is the support from our, uh, our county government going to be there? So I would strongly encourage you to send the right message to the rest of the, the, the towns and, and communities within, within Tompkins County, uh, because building that trust uh, and working collaboration between county and, and town is, is so important. So um, I would really encourage you all to uh, uh, vote to, to move this to the uh, legislature because I think it's a, a great resolution and I think uh, it's, it provides a great uh, cost saving uh, benefit and opportunity for collaboration. So thank you for the time. Thank you, Greg. Anyone else on privilege of the floor? Okay. Uh, I don't have a formal chair's report this morning. Uh, I think we'll get right into uh, the agenda. Lisa Holmes, do we have a report this morning? Sure, I have a few brief updates. Um, just wanted to let folks know that the airport search, the airport director search process continues. Uh, continued this week. We had uh, finalists interviewing with the interview panel and then uh, had Q&A sessions with staff. 
Um, so that process is moving along and we will keep people informed as, as, that, as that moves along. Also, um, we released the RFP for the recovery grant program looking for a consultant that was released yesterday and posted um, to BidNet, which is part of the uh, Tompkins County Finance Department's purchasing website. So interested vendors can go to that website. Um, again, this is not for the grants itself, but for a consultant to assist the county in administering the grant. So that will be posted um, it, um, for the next 30 days or so. And question if, if vendors have or applicants have questions um, about the process, there is a Q&A process on that site that they can use to get their questions posted and answers posted for all to see. Uh, I think that's it for me. Questions for Lisa? Well, I guess you covered everything, Lisa. We, we appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we have a pretty important presentation now. Uh, welcome, Mike Seeley here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know Mike, he's our new uh, Director of Emergency Response. And he's gonna to talk to us about the uh, progress for the backup uh, emergency response center. And uh, Mike, uh, please uh, take it away. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. Um, I've put together a short presentation. I will share my screen now. So we go share screen and someone wants to say something, just holler out so I, we can hear it. Here your here your your question is waiting, and then we'll call on you. Okay. Um, can everybody see the presentation? Yes. Uh, I don't think you're in. But your notes are also yeah, showing. Yeah, uh, it's it's not full screen. How's that? <clears throat> uh, nope, same thing. All right. You just. Uh, you're getting there. Yeah. I'll fix it for you. I don't like the snow. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because I'm using two screens. So. Wow, are my notes still showing? No, we don't, we don't see anything yet. Uh, okay. Screensaver. I apologize. Well, I think we can see it. We can, if you can go ahead with it. Yeah, for some reason, it's not allowing me to. All right, let me just try one other thing here. All right, let me try one more time. How's that? That's good. There you go. Okay. So thank you for your patience. I, I truly appreciate it. So I was asked, I was asked to give a, a, a short presentation as to uh, the backup center. I, I, I am going to take us sort of back to the beginning as to uh, why we need a backup center and then cover uh, where we are to date. Um, as many of you know, um, this project uh, was handed off to me just a couple of months ago, and I'm really excited uh, to be part of it and to be a steward of this project. I think it's something that's long overdue for uh, Tompkins County, and I'm really um, proud uh, to be a part of it. Um, the goal of this project is to develop um, not only a backup um, 911 communication center, but also to enhance our existing radio system by building um, some very um, necessary 
uh, redundant components that we don't currently have in our system, which I will also uh, cover today. Uh, so the rationale is currently, uh, we don't currently have a backup center. Uh, we don't currently have any backup partners. And I think it's an important time to emphasize that there's, you know, there is a difference between having a backup location or a backup center and having backup partners with other um, uh, county 911 centers. Uh, so for example, uh, we don't currently have a protocol in place for uh, what they refer to as 911 rollover, which means if we get inundated in the 911 center, uh, those calls do not roll over to another uh, PSAP or another county 911 center where those calls can be answered by a, um, an operator, a 911 uh, center dispatcher. So I'm pleased to say that uh, we, we've started some conversations with some of our uh, neighboring counties to do just that. And we don't currently have a continuity of operation plan. So as we build out our new backup center and we develop these relationships with other uh, neighboring counties, uh, that will begin the, the, the actual continuity of operations plan. Uh, additionally, our radio system um, has very limited uh, redundancy. Uh, most of the redundant components in our system are here on Brown Road. And really what that means is if we ever had a catastrophic event here at this location, uh, we would have an extended downtime for our 911 center. So the scope of the project was to not only build a backup center, um, but uh, prior, just prior to my arrival, it's my understanding that the uh, relationship and a, a joint effort was established with uh, the Cornell Police Department, Cornell University, uh, to share space. Um, so uh, I know that there was some previous conversation with some surrounding counties, but I, uh, it's my understanding that this was ultimately what was decided. Um, we're also going to be exploring uh, shared services, which I previously mentioned, and we've already begun that process. And again, uh, developing a continuity of operation plan and then looking to see what we can do to enhance our radio system. And then lastly, um, renovating our existing space, um, which uh, is currently 17 years old. And a lot of the um, furniture in the space is, um, is antiquated and it is at end of life. Fortunately, we have a fantastic IT team and they've been able to keep our, uh, at least the technology side of things running for us. Um, since we opened up 17 years ago. So progress to date, uh, just recently, we have established and identified a location. Uh, it's going to be at the East Hill Plaza, and I do have some photos of that um, in some um, forthcoming slides. Uh, we've decided to divide the, uh, the project into three phases, and these three phases will run concurrently. They're not going to be sequential. And we, we're doing that, obviously, because I recognize how important it is to really um, to make progress on this project. Uh, we believe that will take approximately two years to complete all three. Um, and uh, we do have weekly meetings now with both internal and external partners, and we've initiated conversation um, with vendors. So this is a photograph of what our uh, backup center, where our backup center will, will be. Uh, that will be the entrance uh, to the backup center. And if you're familiar with the East Hill Plaza, uh, this is, on the side of the building that faces the, um, the hotel. So it's 361 Pine Tree Road. Uh, this is a layout of the space. Um, the area that's um, white with the green border, that will be the space that we will use. It re requires very limited um, um, upgrades to the space. In fact, really there's almost no construction that's going to be needed in the physical space. Um, the space that's marked 180A and 180B will likely be where we put all of our network and computer, uh, computer equipment. And then 180C will be a shared supervisor space uh, for both uh, Cornell uh, Public Safety and our uh, dispatch supervisor. This is an example of a potential layout for the backup center. Um, we're not necessarily sure that we're going to need this many stations. We're having a team needs assessment on Monday afternoon where we're going to go through what our needs versus wants are, and we're going to flush this out, um, but this will likely change. Um, and you will notice that this, this, this example, there's eight stations, but we're not necessarily sure that that will be necessary because again, this will be a, a shared space with Cornell um, and we'll have to build it so that both entities could work um, at the same time if necessary. Something I already mentioned a little bit earlier is that all three phases will, um, will, will be doing them concurrently and really with our goal is to have, uh, you know, 9-11, um, 
or 911 resiliency, which I think right now is a gap. So phase one, I'm pleased to say that we've been able to make some significant progress. Uh, number one, we've already selected a location. We've defined our scope. We've created subgroups. We've already begun product review and we've begun working with vendors to pr start preparing uh, quotes. After Monday's uh, team needs assessment, um, we will be able to go back to our vendors and really be able to have them narrow down uh, what it's gonna cost for each um, aspect of the project. Um, still to do in the phase one is um, an MOU for the shared space at Cornell. Cornell has sent us a document and we just um, forwarded that on to uh, Jonathan yesterday. Um, so I'm very excited that we're at that phase. Um, preparing the physical location uh, for the furniture and then obviously the technology that will eventually go into that space. We do have to make some modifications to our antenna system, and that specifically means that we have a microwave hop that will go from the Ithaca College to the backup center. And again, that goes right back to the redundancy uh, piece that I talked about earlier, because right now um, the way it's set up here is that hop goes from Brown Road to uh, the backup center. And again, if something were to happen here, likely we would lose our, our antenna here as well. So we wanna make sure that we have some redundancy and um, a backup plan for that. Uh, then we will do our radio console installs, um, our Vesta phone system, which is really how we manage all the 911 calls coming in. We're going to have to add some computer-aided dispatch um, stations to each one of our workstations. And again, um, upgrading uh, the radio system, which will begin uh, phase two. So under phase two, this is where we'll really start to focus on continuity of operations and looking at um, two um, specific pieces of um, hardware in our radio system that both currently reside at Brown Road. And again, meaning that if anything were to happen here, uh, we would lose um, much of our, our communication. So we are going to build a redundant prime. Uh, that's the second bullet. We're going to put that at our Catherine Street, uh, our Catherine um, uh, antenna site. And th the hope is that something, if something were to happen here, we would have a backup. And what the prime does is allow us to maintain um, radio communication with all the emergency services. We had initially looked at building a redundant master, uh, which has um, much to do with how we communicate, not just with uh, direct radio communication with first responders, but also paging. But in a recent conversation with our Motorola vendor, uh, we believe we have an alternative uh, to that approach, which could actually now result in a significant amount of savings in this project. Um, I will report back to the committee in the near future on that once we were able to flush that out with the vendor. Um, and again, after Monday's meeting, we should have more information on that, but I'm pretty excited about this opportunity. Next um, would be the 911 uh, rollover, uh, making sure that we have relationships with surrounding counties that can capture our calls in the event of, in the, in the event of, of something occurring here at Brown Road. Now, this wouldn't just mean if something um, failed here. This could just mean that we have an event in the county where uh, the 911 center becomes inundated. So um, some of you may know I come from New Jersey in an area that uh, heavily flooded. And um, a few weeks back when Ida hit my old hometown, which also happened to be the town where the 911 center was in, that county, my county, uh, received 13,000 911 calls in 12 hours. Many of those calls could not answer. And the way the system works in New Jersey is they have to roll over from county to county. Um, that's not a requirement here in the state of New York, but it is incumbent upon the counties to develop those relationships and put those type of safeguards in place. And I've already begun to lay the groundwork to do just that. Um, and then uh, lastly, we're looking at other shared, op, uh, shared service opportunities as well with regards to uh, the new system. And then lastly, uh, phase three will, will be the refurbishing of our existing uh, 911 center. Uh, this has been in 24-7, uh, 365 operations since 2004, meaning that the lights have never been turned off. And uh, some of our e e equipment, um, not necessarily the IT equipment, because again, I, I, I think we're very fortunate to have the IT team that we have. Um, in really just a few short months that I've been here, I have found them to be a fantastic partner. Uh, and they have done a phenomenal job at keeping our technology up to speed. But other components in the center are are truly at end of life and we're starting and the furniture is beginning to show its wear and it's just not as functional as it once was. Um, and that might mean a slightly different layout um, than what we currently have, but 
I think ultimately, if we look at the fact that we probably won't even be doing this until 2022, we'll be very close to the 18 year mark uh, for some of this um, furniture, um, or actually 2023, I'm sorry. Um, meaning that I think what we're doing today will certainly um, bring us well into the future with regards not only to technology, but also space for our, our folks to work in. So does anybody have any questions? Questions, uh, Dan Klein. Thank you, I, I have a number of questions. Um, so I heard you say that the MOU from Cornell, we just got it and our county attorney is looking at it. So perhaps some of these questions cannot be answered yet. But my first question was what about Cornell's commitment to this project? What, what are they putting in? Well, in part, they're uh, providing us space. Uh, some of the details um, are still new to me and I'm still learning. Uh, I'm just being frank. Um, but obviously we're, we're going to be utilizing their space. We'll be sharing um, some services with them. And one, one of the things that we're looking at specifically is because we share some of the same vendors is whether or not we can save some money um, because um, if, the, if the equipment's in one space, and we have, for example, we do some monthly assessments on our equipment and they do monthly assessments on their equipment. Could we, um, could we see a savings um, because that equipment's in the same space and we'll own some of it and they'll own some of it. Some of it. And the vendors have so far um, suggested that there could be a savings in that. So um, that, that is exciting to us as well. Mike, I would love to see that developed as, uh, or hear about this more as it's developed. I understand we're at a stage right now where it's very, it's preliminary, but uh, you know we're we're putting we're committing a lot of money to this. I'm just wondering if there's money, you know, a money commitment from Cornell, or if you're suggesting savings, you know, I'd like to see that um, compiled at some point. Is that absolutely okay? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just an important time to just reiterate that, you know, a lot of this funding isn't just going to be for the backup center, but really developing backup processes as well. Again, some with other counties and some components that are uh, that we don't currently have redundancy for. So it's not all necessarily just going into that location. And that's why I thought it was really important for me to emphasize that in the presentation, because I think um, that there was a belief that most of that funding was going to be going just to that space. Um, and it's going to be much broader. That's good. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. So do I understand, just, so Cornell currently has its own dispatch center, is that correct? That is correct. So Cornell has a dispatch center very, very similar to ours, and they do have a backup center, um, but it's very small, uh, whereas we have our primary dispatch center, and we have no backup location. Um, so what we're hoping to get out of this and also what Cornell is hoping to get out of it is a more up-to-date um, backup location in the event either one of our primary locations uh, were to experience some form of uh, failure or situation. One of the things that I've learned as I've been going around and meeting my uh, colleagues in other counties is that some of the counties when they were experiencing or going through the COVID um, uh, epidemic is that they were the pandemic they split up their teams and they had some of their team members working at their backup locations so they didn't have everybody in one room. Uh, we were fortunate that our space was laid out in such a way that we were able to provide that social distancing for our team. Uh, but had we run into something a little bit more complicated here, uh, we might have had a dilemma in our hands as far as having people working in that space. So I have learned that that's one strategy that was used at other um, in other counties. So if you can imagine right now, uh, we have, um, you know, four dispatchers and a supervisor dispatching right now, two in theory could be working in our backup center, three could be working here. So we can have a little geodiversity with regards to our personnel uh, during a crisis, or if we ever had to separate personnel because maybe something like another pandemic. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, some years ago now, maybe five-ish years ago, you know, there was a plan for, uh, I think they were calling it the East Hill Village. Um, and I know those plans have either been put on hold or scrapped. I'm not really sure of the status, but I just wanted to ask about this project in conjunction with any potential development there in the future. Is there some kind of guarantee that, like, well, let me ask it in two different ways. Is there a, a, a lease involved in this? Is there, if so, is there a length of time attached to that lease or any other kind of guarantee that we would, have this space regardless of what future development Cornell might do on that site? 
Yes, and again, I don't want to overspeak, but there is uh, talk about a, a lengthy uh, lease. Um, and right now, there's we're, we won't be paying for this space or for the use of this space. I mean, obviously, we'll have to pay for the you know for the dispatch workstations that we have we have in the space. But to actually use the space um, won't cost us anything, and we are working through those details right now. Um, I just don't want to misspeak. Um, but I'm not familiar with the East Hill Village project, so I have written that down uh, to go back to my team and ask them about those details about that project and to see whether or not um, this dovetails, that dovetails into what we're doing with this. Thank you. I just have one more question. So when we heard about this a little bit earlier this week, um, we were told that there's this... Uh, um, Cons consistent um, uh, consistent funding from New York State that comes to to us for for the emergency dispatch center, and that that money would be used to pay back the bond that we just issued the other night. And so I wonder if you could talk a little more about that. How much do we get each year? How long would we expect that money take for that money to pay back the bond? And then along with that, you know, that's so that money now is going to be diverted to pay for this, this project. Do we anticipate that that means we're going to come up short in other projects that the dispatch center probably would have had over the next few years that would have been paid for with this money? Thanks. Yeah, that's a great question. So the, 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 the first part of your question is the, the grant is referred to as the statewide interoperability communications grant. On uh, the last grant cycle, we received approximately $656,000. Uh, we just received an award letter about two weeks ago. Um, and it's my understanding that we will see in the next grant cycle um, about $578,000. Uh, and that that's been earmarked for uh, the, I, the repayment of this, of this bond. Uh, so I learned uh, about this earlier this week, um, and I need to sit down with some members of my team to have a better understanding of when they decided to use this particular grant, where we may fall short. I'm not sure we will, but I don't have a solid understanding right now as to what this grant was previously used for. I will find that information out, and I'll have a much better understanding once um, that team member is back from a conference. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, Glenn, did you have your hand up? Okay, then let's go to Ann, please. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike Lane, and thanks, Mike Spitley, for the presentation. I I can only imagine. I don't know if we had figures um, before. I think we might have a while ago. Just some rough figures, uh, but I could be wrong. Of what if we were to do this as a standalone project? So I can only imagine that this is going to save us uh, a lot of money. And I I don't have any questions, but I uh, appreciate the update, and I and I'm. I think it's a necessary uh, center to have to have to have something uh, for emergencies, or like you said, it could be used for something else, less less emergency or less emergent. So thank you very much for working on this. Thank you, Martha Robertson. Thanks very much, Mike. Um, Mike, you and I will remember what a big deal it was. To, to do the emergency communication system at all, and then to open up the, the 911 center and to hear you, you, Michael Stitley talk about it. Of it's course, because I remember that when there was the one, the one button to push it over back in the 911 center. Yep, you're right. Yeah, so it was a big deal, and it's a little shocking to hear you say how aging it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't, I get it. Um, I would just say on East Hill Village, Dan, that was that. That um, big project mostly was very significantly was going to um, redesign the other end of the shopping plaza. What Mike Stitley is talking about is is the eastern end near the ho the Best Western Hotel. Is that right, Mike? That's correct. Yeah. And and the redevelopment was like entirely over by Pine Tree Road where Walgreens is now, that, that side of the whole mall. I, I, I would really doubt there'd be any impact there if, if and when Cornell eventually gets around to doing that project. Um, the, um, does Mike, does, does Cornell have any kind of backup, right? You said they have a small backup center now? 
They do. And, and frankly, it's, it's really a, a closet. It's very small and they have, um, you know, a workstation in there. So uh, it would be more challenging for them to be able to stand up their cooperation. Uh, so that's, again, that's part of what we're really hoping to do too is be, because we use the same, a lot of the same equipment, if we didn't have to share the space at the exact same time, for, for example, um, that each of us would have some uh, additional workstation. So even within this project, there's, and not just sharing the space, but also sharing some equipment because um, the equipment is very similar. And the working relationship uh, with Cornell right now um, has been fantastic. And we've been able to move along and just even just trying to identify the type of furniture. Uh, there hasn't been any real concerns there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we have to build the rooms around the furniture because the furniture is so large and we're, they're really like spaceships, frankly. Uh, if you can imagine six um, dispatch screens in front of an individual. Uh, so, um, so I think there's a, some real exciting opportunity here. So it's really kind of win-win. It's something that they needed too at the same time. Uh, absolutely. Um, now, what happens, like, I'm trying to understand this. Is this like as if we're building a whole new 911 center that only gets used when the first one goes dark or whatever? Does that's a great question. Or? Yep, that's a great question. And I think in some places of the world, that's probably exactly how they would think. And that's not how I'm thinking. Uh, it is my intention, at, at least um, right now with talking with the team, that we would be staffing the space at least weekly at least one shift. And the reason we need to do that is number one, we have to make sure that this technology is in a constant state of ready. And one of the reasons that we're looking to purchase all the equipment at once, even though phase three is not until 2023, is because we want there to be commonality with the, with the, with the furniture, for example. What I don't want is for us to invest this type of money and for it to get dust, or as many of us have known, not turning on our computers for a month, how many backups you have to go through before you can start using it, right? Or updates, I should say. So um, I want this redundant plan, I want our continuity of operations plan to be exercised as much as we possibly can. And working with my 911 center manager, we've actually are developing scenarios that will seem like a normal workday for our team, but in essence will be an exercise or a drill for us. So if I may, if you can imagine on any given week, uh, we deciding to send one or two employees over to the backup center where they would work over there and the remaining three would work here. And how does that work when we have to split the team? One of my concerns and one of the reasons why developing backup relationships as opposed to just a backup center with neighboring counties is what happens during the period of time when we go dark here and it takes us to open up the backup center. You know, let's say we had an environmental event where we have trees down all over the place and likely that would be what would actually cause us to enter that type of state. It might take us an hour or two hours to navigate roads just to get to the backup center, even though as a crow flies, it's only five miles. Um, so there's a lot that will go into this and it is my intention that we're using this center uh, as frequently as possible so that the team is really comfortable in the space and that if it ever were to happen, it becomes second nature and not a bunch of surprises. And that really goes back to our emergency management responsibility too. Putting 911 aside, you know, the other side of the house is emergency management and preparedness. So if we're not prepared, certainly can't expect the community to be prepared. So this is just a way for us to be prepared and ready if that were to ever happen. That sounds great. And it sounds like our staff will work side by side with Cornell staff. That's correct. And we're already doing that. And uh, I really appreciate the relationship that was forged even prior to me arriving. Um, and I feel honored again to continue to develop that. And uh, we have a real partner there with their public safety department. Uh, I think this is impressive and, and it's really great. I think it's, um, I understand the idea of rolling over to other counties, which makes sense as well. But I think the idea of having this, this center in our county with our, our biggest employer and the biggest residential Absolutely. Uh, provider is, is really a great solution. Thanks Absolutely. so much. You're welcome, thank you. Um, Mike, I had a couple of things. Um, sure. You showed a picture of um, where this is. It's in the plaza. Uh, I couldn't quite orient myself to it. Is it a, an old storefront that's being re reworked? 
That's a great question. Actually, it's behind an old storefront that was uh, that's not being used right now. So what was interesting about this particular strip mall is there's a section of it behind it that currently houses uh, many of Cornell's uh, support operations. So in particular, uh, in that space is the team that is responsible for card access and for uh, their uh, videos, their video surveillance system. Uh, so we will have a, a partner there that's there nearly uh, 24 hours a day that really is very aligned with what our underlying mission is as well, which is safety and security. So um, yeah, it's in, it's in the back and it's right across from the Best Western. It's probably the best way I could describe it. So if you were to walk out that side door, you'd be looking at the Best Western right where the road sort of elevates where you could then walk into the, to the main lobby. Um, and then when you get into the back area, of that of that building there's other um like there's some conference rooms back there what's really nice about this place as well is that there's a there's a generator and cornell will be updating the generator um so um again i believe in layers of redundancy so i believe we have our primary we have our backup and then we have redundant uh features and in with and within our redundant um redundancy plan we need to have layers and layers and layers um, this location isn't at risk for a natural uh, disaster, for example, flooding, is it? It's certainly not for flooding. I, I would hate to mislead the committee by saying that, you know, something couldn't happen there. Uh, again, coming from an area in New Jersey where we flooded, it uh, seemed like every other day. Uh, you know, I have a certain appreciation for that. Um, so, you know, certainly there are certain environmental emergencies that could affect that space. Um, but I, but certainly not flooding, which again, which is why it's also important to have some um, backup partners uh, in this in the event that it, uh, number one takes us a while to stand up the space, or uh, some or for some reason that space is also affected by the by the emergency. And the other thing, uh, to Dan's point about the uh, the bonding, uh, I think I think the, the committee and the legislature ought to be aware that. Even though we've uh, authorized this bond, uh, we can still decide not to do this if we want to. That was the understanding. Uh, I'm not suggesting that, but the idea of using grant grants in the future for paying the the payments uh, is nice, and I hope that those grants continue. But they they are always at risk, mm -hmm. and the county is the uh, is on the line to make these payments, whether or not the grants come through from the state or other, other sources. And I uh, would um, use as a comparison, some money that we borrowed for uh, our, our community college to which the, the payments would be made by the college from um, the uh, chargeback funds coming from basically other counties. But the reduc reduction in uh, student population uh, made, the, made us have to re-examine how those were going to be paid back and extend that over a longer period of time. So I just want everyone to understand that uh, this funding stream related to grants can always be changed by the state. And that's not Mike's fault. That's just the way things are. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anything else? Uh, Mike, this was a, a great presentation. Thank you so much. I thought it was very thorough and concise. Thank you. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Right. Let's go to Roxanne at the airport. Roxanne Noble. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I believe I just have the two resolutions that I did, and I think probably Rick will go over the, the resolutions relating to the bonding. Okay, you want us to know anything before we, we take up the resolutions or just want us to go ahead with them? I don't think I have anything today. I think we went over stuff that I had Tuesday. I think I've, I've seen you guys quite a bit lately, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, well, let's start out with resolution A, a budget adjustment, Ithaca Tompkins International Airport, uh, ID 10444. Someone wanna put that on the table? Glenn, uh, I got Dan for a second. Uh, all right, you wanna explain this one? So this one is for, um, so Mike has retired effective September 30th, and there was an agreement made, he'll be providing consulting services uh, for the airport. 
And uh, this is just to cover the remainder of this year in the budget, um, the $13,000 to cover his cost for the professional services. Any questions? Discussion, Dan. So I see in the memo that it's the final line, the sentence of the memo says, the costs will be $2,000 biweekly. Is that, uh, my understanding was Mike was gonna be used as an, on an as needed basis is, go ahead Roxanne, I think you're, you're ready to sure. answer it. Sure, that's, um, so the agreement didn't indicate that, the agreement that was made um, that I read through indicated it's $2,000 biweekly for the remainder of this year. And then in 2022, you know, I'll be doing another uh, adjustment too for our 2022 budget because I didn't have information when I prepared the budget. Um, there's a set fee that will be paid at the beginning of the year as a retainer. Um, I'm gonna give you a heads up on that. So that's what the agreement indicated that um, I received. Okay, thanks. Yep. Lisa, is, uh, is there anything you wanna add? I think I think that covers it. Okay, thank you. Are we ready to vote? Uh, Dave McKenna. Sorry, yes. You're sorry, yes, or just yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had my thing on mute. Ann Corman. <clears throat> yeah, yes, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> Glenn. Yes. Dan? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, let's go to resolution B. Audit of final payment, Paragon Environmental Construction Inc. Fuel Facility, Ithaca Tompkins International Airport, 10446. Someone want to move that one? Yeah, I'll move it. Uh, Dave has moved it. Glenn has seconded it. Roxanne? So this is the final payment for the fuel farm project that we just completed. It's a small payment, and then there's the release of the retainage. Uh, the project has, you know, done wonders. Uh, that's being used by, you know, the highway, the state DOT, many other county entities, and we're currently also looking at seeing if we can um, contract with the post office to be able to use it. So this not only is a great showing of shared services, but it's also a revenue generator for the airport. So just a positive thing all around. And it cuts down on the environmental issue too by having it consolidated into one area, the fuel farm for multiple use. Um, I see John there. John, does our highway department use this at all or is that all fueled up at uh, Bostwick Road? Uh, that statement was news to me and they may do that, but uh, generally they fuel up at the end of the day here. The state DOT, the state highway is what I was referring to. The state DOT uses the facility in the sheriff's department. Well, I think that's great. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Martha. Hi, Roxanne. You said shared services, and I thought, um, our shared services plan, Lisa, is this something that would qualify under that? Sorry, um, that's uh, actually, thank you for that idea. I don't know that we discussed it. We would have to think about, um, we'll have to go back and, and look into it and see if it would qualify in terms of the timing of, of implementation, but thank you for the idea. Okay, thank you. Shall we vote? Dan. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Dan. Yes. Dave? Yes. I vote yes, that's unanimous. Then we have resolution C, authorizing a public hearing in accordance with section 147F of the IRS uh, code of 1986 as amended, that's 10448. Uh, is this the one we're gonna have uh, here from uh, Rick Snyder on? That's correct. <laughs> Each year when we uh, float debt for the airport, which this is the third or fourth year in a row because we've just been issuing bans, we have to come up with a special authorizing resolution according to 
Section 147F of the IRS Code. This is not applicable to most of our county projects, but it does apply to the airport uh, per conversations we've had with Bill Marquardt, our bond council. So we've been doing these public hearings, which we call TEFRA public hearings under the IRS code 147F, which is also followed by another resolution accompanying this, that is the approval of the bonds that we will be floating for the airport in February. As background, you know the bans that we have been doing for the airport to get through the entire large project have been issued on a one-year term basis. And that means every, every year, every February, we've added a little bit more money uh, to the amount of outstanding debt to the point that we're up to a, right now uh, an outstanding ban or bond anticipation note of $13 million for the airport. That ban comes due in February. And so as part of our annual debt issuance for the whole county, we are scheduled to borrow a long-term bond in the amount of $11,880,000 for the airport. That will refinance the outstanding $13 million of debt. Uh, these documents have been drawn up by our bond council, Bill Marquardt. Uh, we are on a tight schedule because we have to have uh, both of these resolutions adopted by this committee and then again by the legislature. And the first one is authorizing a public hearing, and that is so residents and constituents can come out and ask questions about what is the debt for, why are we borrowing the money, and you've experienced this, I think, in every November and December for the last two or three years. So this first resolution is on authorizing the public hearing. Uh, the second resolution that accompanies this is actually the authorization for bonding the airport debt in the amount up to $11,880,000. And on page 12 of your packet is a nice little narrative that explains chapter 147F and why we go through this every year. Uh, it's mainly because the public has a right to ask questions about why we are floating debt for this project. For purposes of this section of the code, um, there has to be an applicable elected representative that schedules this public hearing and listens to the public questions that are raised. In our case here in Tompkins County, by definition, the applicable elected representative happens to be the county legislature. So that's pretty much what I have been bringing to you in the form of these two TEFRA resolutions each of the last two or three years. And it's time again uh, to authorize th these types of resolutions if indeed we are going to issue the debt in February of 22. All right, well, let's, let's go get into them. The, uh... Uh, the public hearing is uh, authorized for December 7th on this, in the resolution. Did, I'm sorry, Kathy, did we move this? All right, someone want to move that resolution, Glenn? Is there a second? Seconded by Dan. Uh, any further discussion on setting the public hearing? Dan. Nick, I just wanted to clarify. Are we, did you say that we're issuing a one-year bond now, but we're going to be issuing a long-term bond within the year, did you say that? No, we have been issuing one year bans, bond anticipation notes. Yeah. We are now at that point where the projects are finished. We have either received all the revenues that we're going to receive outside of bonding uh, for the airport with the exception of a few uh, that we place estimates on uh, that my call and the engineers have supplied fairly accurate estimates so we know what the county's portion is uh, that we have to support and bond. And so 
this bond that takes place in February will be the final permanent long-term bond. Thank you. Uh, Anne? Thank you um, for the explanation, Rick. Uh, I just had one question. Is there any reason, uh, as, as Mike Lane said, this is December 7th, is there any reason we're not doing this sooner? Or is that just, I guess, in the correct timeline that you need? This all falls within a, a pretty well orchestrated timeline for floating the bonds. All the county bonds we begin to work on in August. And there's certain benchmarks that we have to meet each month. I think you just passed the last two bond resolutions of other county projects, meaning the green space facilities projects and the one that Mike Stigley just reported out on, and that was the emergency backup center. Those are the other two bond authorizations that the legislature just voted this week. So the in answer to your question, yeah, we're on a fairly well orchestrated timeline and this is the right time to move these things through committee so that we get them all done by the end of December. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready to vote. Uh, Dave? Yes. Ann? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Dan? Yes. I'm yes. And resolution D is a resolution of the Tompkins County Legislature as a, the elected legislative body uh, of Tompkins County, New York, in accordance with section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, approving the issuance of the county by the County of Tompkins, New York, of its airport serial bonds of uh, 2022 subject to the alternative minimum tax in an aggregate principal amount of $11,880,000. Now that doesn't, as I understand it, Rick, that doesn't mean we're paying any tax. Uh, it just means that the, uh, whatever uh, income from these bonds that the bondholders buy could be taxable. Right, that's described in the, uh, the fourth whereas, and the fourth whereas mentions that the bonds will not be for the purchasers of the bond, the bonds will not be excluded from gross income for federal income tax purpose unless the legislature takes this particular action that, that we're doing in this resolution. Since you will approve this resolution, the, uh, the bondholders will then be able to uh, not include this as gross income on their federal income tax. So it's a very important requirement for us to cross so that those who purchase our bonds, uh, these will in effect be tax exempt bonds. Thank you. Can I, get, can I get a motion, please? Uh, Glenn, uh, seconded by Dave. Uh, any further discussion? Let's vote. Uh, Dave? Yes. Ann? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Dan? Yes. I vote yes. Roxanne, anything else for the airport this morning? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Guess not. You're muted, Roxanne. Oh, I think we're pretty good. Uh, I think that's all we have for the agenda items. All right, good. We thank you for being here and working on these. Can I ask a quick question? Um, I I did notice that the uh, committee has their um, goals from 2021 listed in the airport regarding the CDL. Do you want me to stay on for anything for that? Um, will you need uh, a question from me? Unless any of the other committee members think you, she needs to stay, I don't think we need to have her stay, do we? All right. Thank you, Roxanne, for asking. You're welcome. Have a good day. All right, we go to the Department of Recycling and Materials Management. I see Leo Riley. Morning. Good morning, Mike, how you doing? Good, thank you. Uh, we have an information item and any report you'd like to ask or like to give us this morning. 
Um, I, I don't have anything really or, uh, prepared, Mike. I know Barb has plans for an update on the facility um, in November. Um, Will that be next month? Yes, I believe uh, next month she's planning on doing that along with uh, an update on the EPP. And uh, I believe that includes uh, the reusable bag distribution as well. well let's take the information item. Uh, anybody have any questions on that one? Uh, capital payment summaries? No. Okay, questions for Leo Riley. Dan. Thanks, uh, Leo, I have a question. I'm not sure if you can answer, but at least it'll get the question to the works. Just uh, in the last day, I uh, saw some material that is being circulated locally talking about glass recycling. And it, it talked about how the glass that we collect from our recycle bins, you know, it isn't exactly recycled into new bottles. We've talked about that here at the committee before. But what was new in this information, and, and I don't, I'm asking because I don't know if it's true. I wanted to hear what, what, what the reality is, is that the glass that's collected by the private um, five cent deposit can and bottle businesses that are in the county, that that glass is in a separate waste stream and that that glass is truly recycled. Do you have any information on that? Well, um, you know, I, I don't, uh, I, I, can, I can tell you the way you worded that is correct. Um, you know, it's collected in a, in a different um, fashion. Um, you know, all of us will take our, our glass bottles, the returnables back, um, those are sorted um, by color. Um, and what I can tell you, and I'm, I'm not an, an expert once material leaves our hands here, um, but you know, that glass will get recycled back into bottles. Um, they recycle it in a, you know, by, by clear glass, by brown glass. And I believe there's a mix called Gramber which is green and brown uh, mixed together. So last I knew that was the three um, sorts of, of glass by color that would go back into beer bottles, wine bottles, you know, iced tea bottles and, and what have you, yes. Thank you, appreciate it. Anything else for Leo? Leo, thank you for being here. Thank you. All right, let's go to the highway department. Uh, John Weibert is here. Morning, John. Sorry, I hadn't found my mouse. <laughs> well, time the time of year when the mice come in, you know. I, yeah, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything you'd like to start out with? Uh, there isn't anything uh, really right now that I can think of here to answer questions. Okay. Uh, let's take the two information items. There's a capital payment summary report and the uh, cap the quarterly uh, highway capital status report. Uh, so the uh, are there any questions on the capital payment summary? For the, they're basically for br the bridges. Yes. It's on uh, packet page 16. Sir? Oh, Ann, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. No worries. Uh, just a minor question. I just, uh, on the capital payment summary report uh, for the Etna Lane bridge replacement for the design services, there's a current payment due of $1,263. It just, it's, it's probably not, a, not an issue. It just seemed like a small amount than we usually see at one point when it's not the final payment. It just is however much was due during that period, I guess. 
That's true. I couldn't tell you exactly what those hours were spent on, uh, but with multipliers that are appropriate for the contract, um, and that could just be, you know, half a day spent between, you know, the various design people. Um, we're kind of in a holding pattern there. We're waiting for uh, what's called the ps &E to be uh, approved. That's a uh, plan specs and estimate. So we had some slowdown with some right-of-way issues and some other things. So really, it's been crawling along until we can get all of the, you know, the boxes, appropriate boxes checked off, and then DOT can give us that authorization, that, that ps and &E approval, and then we will start getting into the bidding and so forth. So the projects, you know, as far as the design services go, it's nearly complete. There's a few other things to do. Um, we're in that time of year that we're going to be pushing to get that bid so that we can start in the spring. But um, I think your assessment there is, is correct. There's not much going on at this time. Okay, thank you. Anything else on that? All right, let's go then to the uh, capital projects quarterly report. Uh, John, uh, usually when Jeff's here, he kind of goes through them and points out any, uh, any changes. Uh, do you want to do that with us this morning? I can, if you don't mind me looking the other way as I scroll through all of these. No, things. that's all right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Things of interest. Um, Central Chapel Road is under construction. I'm going to say theoretically, as in anticipate that those structural units will be set on Monday. Uh, there's been a holdup with Binghamton precast. There are some issues with the units. There's issue with timing and delivery, which is a, apparently something that this entire region or any projects that have been using Binghamton precast have been experiencing. So um, unfortunately, it's, it's today or Monday, uh, but as it says, says there, we're kind of delayed in receiving the units. Uh, there is a like a December 1st deadline to uh, get this project open. Um, I, I don't believe that we're going to miss that. If we do, it, it's just that you know, there might be some striping of the road or something like that that needs to be taken care of. But you know, I think the towns have expressed concern about having the road closed during the winter. That's not going to happen. Uh, so <laughs> it's on target. It's not entirely unusual, especially when these projects start reaching the end of their uh, construction phase, let's call it. Uh, John, uh, I didn't understand about the... Uh, uh, the, uh, the the beams uh, is it just a delay in getting them, or you said the whole region is? Are there is there some issue with the uh, construction of these beams? What what's going on? Let's let's call that all of the above. Uh, mostly, it's a scheduling issue. Uh, likewise, we're uh, experiencing we as in the the industry is experiencing a uh, delay in getting things paved. For instance, you know, we've got several projects that we need to pave, but the local contractors are just so booked up that they can't get to that. All right. So there that that's call that normal again, industry normal. The Binghamton precasts, I think uh, they're having some problems meeting their schedules for whatever reason that is. I couldn't say. Uh, we're also experiencing uh, uh, some quality issues that need to be addressed. And uh, again, that's not our project necessarily, but again, any projects that have been using Binghamton precast. Uh, I hope that explains it. Well, I have to say it, make, it makes me kind of wonder because I assume we've used them before, right? For some of the bridges we built. If uh, we're, we personally, as in Tompkins County, does yeah. not necessarily, but uh, that's an issue with the bidding situation or system that we have, low bid situation. All right, I guess 
I don't mean to, to, to raise any issue, but are, is the structural integrity of these beams going to be okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, right now, it's more of a cosmetic issue. You know, uh, oh. the quality of the workmanship, craftsmanship, let's say in the finishing of them, there's some some spalling and so forth that they're going to need to fix. But uh, uh, sometimes things are built a little bit out of tolerance, I guess. But those things, are, those things are normally corrected. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you want to move on to the, the lane? <laughs> uh, moving down here. And Elaine, I think I tried to explain exactly what was going on uh, just a few minutes ago. Things are being delayed by some right-of-way issues and so forth. That we're ready to go or practically ready to go. Uh, it's not in our hands. It's not really in um, the designer's hands right now. It's kind of fallen on DOT to give approval so that we can get this thing bid. Uh, East Hill safety improvements. Uh, right now, we are going through these steps in order to um, have a pre-construction meeting, uh, and that'll get the ball rolling. Uh, understanding the desire to get this constructed in before the end of the year, just because of weather, if for no other reason. Uh, economy as the uh, low bid has done some things on their own, hopefully to facilitate that schedule. Uh, so again, it's stepwise going through the whole process in order to get that done. Martha. Uh, thanks, John. Will there be a detour there? Do you think once once it gets started, or will you be uh, able to trade off lanes? No, I don't think that there's a need for a detour there. I mean, basically, all the construction is is let's call it in the grass. Okay, so if there's any sort of work that needs to be done, there may be a shoulder closure or something just because they need to have a concrete truck sitting there, that sort of thing. But it's basically uh, it's a, it's a crosswalk with flashing beacons. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Station Road, we have the units that are, are um, we have the units, they're being stored presently, and we're getting permits that are being submitted to DEC, so there really hasn't been that much change there. Morell Road, I believe Jeff had talked to uh, the committee a while back, talking about reusing or maintaining the temporary structure as a long-term structure and you had requested some information and that information's being developed for you. When might we hear about that? I'd like to say soon as possible. Um, uh, I would say yes, I will have something together for you for the next meeting. Oh, that's, that's good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Boswick Road DPW facilities right now, just the way things have been going with pavers and so forth, um, we're ready to put the top on. There's some other things that we need to do, excuse me, top meaning the wearing course. Right now we are in binder. Um, not sure that we're going to do it this year because of the uh, availability of uh, paving contractors. Uh, we're reusing up all of our chips, let's say, not not the highway chips, but our tokens to uh, have them do our roads. Uh, okay. So that doesn't have to do with chips funding or chips ceiling. That's what you're saying? Correct. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think over these, this next page is the Bridge New York culvert side of it, not the bridge side of it. This is a project, and I think the last time through, we asked for uh, some additional funds for this project. Um, these are six 
culverts kind of scattered across the county that the state has uh, managed the project. And um, there were some delays. The most recent delay is an issue with right away on a parcel, which I can't recall which one it was, but essentially um, <clears throat> one of the landowners, I think there was uh, like a death in a family or something. So they can't get the paperwork completed uh, because of that. So we have to have another option to exclude that little bit of land. Usually these are, you know, let's call it 100 by 100 just for grins, some small parcel that is needed to construct a project. So we can't do that. We have to look for another alternative to exclude that piece. I was told by DOT that I can't build the other five and wait on this one. It's all got to be all together. So these whole projects, which we knew were going to be delayed until 22 anyway. Uh, so that's kind of where we're going right now. And uh, thank you for approving the funding on, on those. Um, I don't know why I have the Ludlow in there. That's closed. And these other ones are just sitting there. Um, as I look through this highway bridge and culverts, this Cortland Street is one of the projects that we had submitted for the 2022 Bridge New York project. So uh, hopefully that will would be approved and we can get that one underway. I don't know why that page is in there. Okay, <laughs> I think that's all of my stuff. Any questions? Thank you for that review, John. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. Uh, anything else for John this morning? Dan? It's just a quick um, note that as I was coming to today's meeting and I went to park in our employee parking lot, which I, I call on Sear Street, um, I saw the highway crew there, our county highway crew repaving or patching, I'm not sure the correct word, that, that lot. And I was just really glad to see it. They seem really glad to be working on that because they, they, they know, you know, I chatted with the guy for a minute. He says how, what a big improvement it's gonna be. So just wanted to let everyone know that this is happening as we speak. And thank you to the highway department for tackling this little issue. Thank you. I'll pass that along. Thanks for that update, Dan. Uh, I have to go over and look at it. Uh, I might add, since Sorrell's not here this morning, uh, that uh, I noticed at the courthouse, they've uh, all the excavations have been filled back in, and there's a large vault uh, with a with a cover uh, for the new trans uh, transformer uh, at the uh, main courthouse. Hi, uh, Glenn. Does Anne want to uh, add this um, resolution? Yeah, we're to going to that next. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's go to uh, uh, Anne has submitted a uh, proposed resolution uh, having to do with reimbursement of the local share of Bridge New York projects that are handled by the towns or villages. Anne, would you like to speak to it? What you've got? Tell us what you're doing. Sure. Um, I, I want to thank um, Jeff Smith for originally writing this up. I just did a couple of grammar things, just very minor things. The um, I just wanted to just note a few important things uh, in here that this uh, creates certainty and predictability for our municipal partners and. Uh, and uh, some things noted in here that it's in the best interest of all taxpayers and Tom of Tompkins County that Bridge New York grants be applied for by all willing municipalities to secure as much outside federal bridge funding as possible to increase the rate of reimbursement or replacement as well as the level of uh, proficiency of county, town and village infrastructure. And the county supports and appreciates the willingness of municipalities to apply for and sponsor these bridge projects and would like to encourage municipalities to continue to partner with the county 
on these grant funded projects. And just a couple more quick uh, excerpts from here. Uh, Tompkins County wants to support local municipalities by reimbursing the local share of 5% of the original grant awarded for the project and up to 20% of the total final cost. If the final project local share exceeds 20%, then a request to the county from the, municip from the municipality can be made. If it's determined by county highway representatives that the overage cost is found to be specific aspects of bridge replacement items, then the county will consider the overage valid and reimbursed to the sponsor the total local share and no betterments will be paid by the county to the municipality above the 20% total project cost. I wanted to read those things because we had um, talked about very various, various aspects of that. So I, to me, it's, it seems pretty solid the way that it's, that it's written and it, and it covers a, a lot of our concerns. I know we're gonna be talking about our goals, the, the committee goals. And even though this wasn't, stated as a committee goal for the year. I think it's something I'd feel really good about if we could, you know, um, get this done. I know my municipalities, my several municipalities in my district would like to see this get done. There's a current project in the town of Ulysses for a bridge over the cemetery, over Cemetery Road. And, um, so, uh, and lastly, I just wanted to say, I want to thank Martha for keep uh, keeping her municipal officials apprised of this. And I want to appreciate those uh, municipal officials too that came today to talk in support of this today and, and other times. Thank you. John, have you reviewed this? Uh, yes, sir, I have. Do you have any comments on it? Uh, I think it summarizes uh, an opinion that at least I personally have, and uh, I think Jeff shares that, you know, there are structures on county roads and we can apply for those things that are on our roads. And we are limited in these applications such as this to two or three, and, and maybe we get one. I think that depending on who's reviewing the applications and so forth, yeah, there's an opportunity as, as this last round has shown a lot more applications. Now, whether or not those that are making the decision give them to the towns or counties or both, I mean, I think it just saves uh, the county you know, uh, money in the long run to have as many of these things uh, approved as possible because of the service life and everything else. You only can do one or two a year. It's going to take a long time to hit the total number of structures that we have. So I, I think for the community of Tompkins County, this is a good thing. Other comments? Uh, at our last meeting, and we talked about uh, an amendment to uh, the proposal that would include two things. One, uh, the approval by the committee and, uh, and the legislature of the MOU, and also uh, excluding certain betterments uh, that, uh, that the towns might ask for. Certainly that came forth because of Freeze Road. And the reason because the Freeze Road is here and all the representatives uh, is because they want the county to be able to pay as much as possible toward the bridge, don't blame them. Uh, but yet there are things that are being uh, put forward, which uh, when we asked the deputy supervisor uh, quite a, a few meetings ago, whether the town was willing to pay for, he wouldn't respond. For example, the traffic lights. Uh, and who's and the maintenance of the traffic lights uh, that would have to go for this uh, very unusual one lane bridge uh, that's there. Uh, we know that this committee, uh, before I was chair, before I was even on it, uh, passed a resolution asking for a two lane bridge at Freeze Road. Uh, that resolution was bottled up by the chair of the legislature at that time. The, uh, but it is still on record, to the best of my knowledge. 
Uh, I just want to say that they, there's the people in other towns should have no concern about the reimbursement and the, the, the George Road Bridge project in the town, the same town, town of Dryden, is a good example where we put in extra money uh, to make sure that the town was whole for that bridge that was built. But I still feel that any resolution at the very, very minimum ought to have the approval of the committee and the legislature. So I won't be able to support this the way it's written. Anyone else? Martha has got hands up. Thank you, Mike. Uh, as everybody knows, that resolution back in 2017 <coughs> passed by the committee was before there was any design developed at all, before the public process, the required public process had happened. Um, you know, this has gone, this is a unique bridge because of its historic nature. So it had to go through many, many more layers of, of federal review and state review. Um, I, uh, you know, I think if this is about money, because it's a one lane bridge, it will come in under budget or very close to budget rather than as a two lane bridge would require reconstruction of freeze road itself because of the, the speeds that would that were documented in the traffic study and would likely come in far higher than the grant the grant allowed and and the uh, you know the state money so if this is about dollars the current design is very likely to save the county money compared to a two-lane bridge if this is about something else Mike then I think that's a um, perhaps a, a poor reason for public policy, a poor reason to, to single out a particular town and a particular community. Um, I think the whole idea here is, is about trust. It is about making sure that local municipalities feel confident that they're not going to be second guessed for political purposes. And I think that um, there is absolutely no reason to single out this particular bridge. Uh, this particular community and this this resolution is is meant to give assurance on that so that as we keep talking so that municipalities will com will feel comfortable enough to partner with the county and make sure that you know if they when they put up the time uh, and the money the staff considerable staff time um, that they're not going to have to um, end up paying for it themselves. Uh, you know, I think that, that, you know, John has spoken, Jeff has spoken. Um, I don't think there's ever been, I don't know that there's ever been a legislator that I know of in my 20 years who has any professional experience in bridge design. So I think for legislators to weigh in on a staff function is really questionable. I think this is really a measure that uh, has been well discussed and well understood and municipalities know what this means and that's why they're watching. Ann? Thank you, Mike. I just want to add that, you know, I, I, I respect everybody's, you know, opinion. I, I feel um, good about being able to vote on this today. I think we looked at, uh, well, I know we looked at some uh, two, uh, two changes to this um, and I reviewed our, our minutes from the last meeting, but remembering back too. So I feel like we've had a good robust discussion on this and um, I hope uh, people are feeling ready to vote on this today. Thank you. Does anyone want to take any action? I'd like to uh, put this on the floor. When moved by Ann, is there a second? Seconded by Glenn. Dan? Discussion? Thank you. Um, I'd like to propose an amendment and then speak to it. We can. Okay, here's my amendment. Um, it would be in the first resolve. I would add on right at the very end of what's already written. If the project meets design and other standards approved by both the county and the applicant municipality, period, uh, comma. 
That is my proposed amendment. Does anyone need me to reread re it before I speak about it? Why don't you do it just so I want to hear the second time? So it would be adding on to the first resolve. <clears throat> if the project meets design and other standards approved by both the county and the applicant municipality. First thing I want to say. Oh, let me see. We need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a second? Ann, are you seconding? No, sorry, the hand was still up from before. Thank you. Okay, the first thing I want to say is this is not about the Freeze Road Bridge. So do we have a second? Yeah, I second. Okay. First thing I want to say is this is not about the Freeze Road Bridge. Um, that has already been discussed and um, I believe the legislature has already decided that it, we're going to we're going with Dryden's recommendation. That's water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. This policy is going forward. Now clearly this was discussion was spawned by the Freeze Road Bridge, but I'm not trying to change the Freeze Road Bridge decision. I just want to make that clear. Um, so what gets said the most in this discussion, it got said again today, is that the towns will be reluctant, hesitant to apply for grants if they don't know that the county has their back in terms of matching the local share. And that got said over and over again. And so I did my due diligence and I went and talked to my towns and talked to a number of members of the Danby Town Board they do not share that opinion at all. In their opinion, there is no, um, there would be no hesitation at all for them applying for a bridge grant or any other grant with the understanding that the county would also, if the county is gonna pay for it, the county would need to also sign on to the design of that project. I went and talked to the Caroline Town Board. The Caroline Town Board Supervisor very clearly said to me, no, of course, why would we expect the county to write a blank check if with, without approving the design? That wouldn't make any sense. I, Dan Klein, was on the Danby Town Board for six years, and I can't imagine in that role just expecting the county to pay for something that we wanted without also the county being involved in the decision-making. That wouldn't make any sense to me. I also, um, specifically, the, the town of Ulysses has been invoked in this a lot. Um, and you represent the district, so you brought them up a lot and you said that, and, and Martha, I think you mentioned too, that Nancy Zaylor said that the town would be very hesitant to apply for a grant if they didn't know ahead of time that the county was gonna pay for it. So I contacted Nancy and had a nice long conversation with her. And here's some things she said. She said, First of all, um, when I said to her, you're, you're, you're being quoted as saying Ulysses would be hesitant to apply for grants if the county does not guarantee the county covering the local share in advance. And she said, I don't think I said that. I asked her what she thought, that should the county um, have a role in deciding the, the design standards for these projects? And she said, yes, she said, Quote, the bridge design should be done in consultation with the county. She said, quote, it should be happening at an early phase in the grant process. She said, quote, county needs to be collaborative in the design process. She said, I read her the language that I just um, gave to you. And she said, quote, I don't think that language would prevent us from applying. So, I really wish we would stop this um, idea that the towns are hesitant to apply for grants because I don't think it's true. We don't have any evidence that's true at all. The town do not expect us to write a blank check. So I don't, and I also, I don't understand why the language I propose is at all controversial. It's as simple as this, we're paying for it. So we get a say in what happens. It's just as simple as that. So that concludes my remarks for now, thank you. Other discussion on the amendment? I want to hear John. John, what do you have to say? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I was 
listening to Dan, what do I have to say about Dan's comments or the whole thing in general? Yeah, he's uh, motion to change the, the, the proposed amendment. Um, I think that uh, to use the Cemetery Road Bridge project um, in, in Ulysses, the whole process was kind of uh, went through and I would not say I guided any real decisions. I had input into the decisions. You know, they asked certain questions. Uh, I, I think I would want to support a bridge that uh, met our requirements that were both short term and long term. Um, I'm not a politician, nor do I play one on TV. I don't want to be involved in that. I just want, you know, to spend the money wisely. Uh, when I say that, please understand that when you have a project that is outside of the scope of a quote unquote normal project, let's say, that if those betterments, and again, betterments mean an awful lot of things to a lot of people. If you know in, ahead of time that I wanna do this bridge and I wanna do this amount of sidewalk and this amount of paving and I need a street light or I need this or I need that, that goes into the initial uh, estimate of the project it should go into it, right? So sometimes you're short. You know, I can tell you honestly, uh, in my previous employment, when I put an estimate together for a Bridge New York project, I forgot to, to factor in something with this uh, foundation, okay? Hey, sometimes you get it, sometimes you miss. That's, that's an... I don't want to say a normal expense that we should, you know, um, cough up the money to pay for, uh, but you're going to need to because you need to take care of those things. Um, so there's there's costs that you forgot about, let's say, that go in there, and those are legit costs, you know. And anything that you propose, you know, big big project, if you get the funding for it, then you know. That's all part of the IPP, which is basically initial planning process, I guess, that goes into the whole application process. I think that what we've seen as um, the association of county superintendents, engineers, and so forth is that, especially on these culvert projects, that we miss the budget. You know, we really mess up on estimating these projects you know, and therefore it's coming out of our pocket. Uh, and, and a lot of that sometimes is because the people putting the application together are local engineers, not engineers that have been involved in the federal pass-through project, you know. So what I can do on my county road with my own forces, I might as well multiply that by three or four times to go through this process. There is a lot of checks and balances, a lot of review and so forth. I personally would not want to go through all of those items on every single municipal project that was submitted. Guidance, knowing what's going on, you know, I don't need to be into the everyday discussions and decisions, but I wanna know that when the contractor walks away and it becomes my bridge again that I know what it is. I know how it's going to operate. I know how to uh, maintain it, um, you know. So that's just my opinion on how these things should work. Okay, one. Okay. Uh, Martha. No, I'm happy to let Glenn go ahead first. He's on the committee. Who else has their hand up? I don't think Glenn has anything to say. He was... uh, I want Dan to repeat the uh, amendment after this, but. All right, go ahead, Martha, then we'll uh, we'll go to, to uh, Glenn. Okay, Dan, I'd, I'd like to think that this is not, not about singling out the town of Dryden and in particular one bridge on the, in the town of Dryden, but this whole conversation started 
uh, I think February or so when, when this committee was considering paying, I think it was 28% extra over the budget for the George Road Bridge. And you specifically said, um, well, I'm, I don't, I'm in favor of paying for this, but I don't wanna pay for, I'm thinking of voting against this because of the Freeze Road Bridge where I don't wanna pay any extra cost, or I don't wanna pay for certain items that are in the project. So it's a little hard to kind of accept that this whole debate, this whole agony is about, is not about Freeze Road. I um, try to accept it because I'm saying that it's not about Freeze Road and that's not what I'm trying to undo. Okay, well, I would like to believe that. I also um, want to hear what Annie says about Nancy Saylor, but I think the, um, um, you know, I, I think the, the other issue that was raised at the last meeting was about the county legislature. And Mike actually said that just now but about the legislature reviewing um, these projects. Uh, I think I heard from John that um, especially as we, uh, if there are a lot of these projects going on at once, which is what our goal is because that just multiplies the, um, the improvements that we can make every year. Uh, and sort of multiplies this, the county staff efforts by ab adding into the, uh, adding with municipal efforts. Um, I think I heard him say he can't, that our staff can't be involved in every meeting about every one of these projects. So I think, yes, obviously there's review and there's communication going on. Um, I do think that when you've got the Federal Highway Administration, the state DOT, and the local highway superintendent all agreeing on a design, I, that seems like a, little, a lot of review and a lot of consensus. And finally, you know, at the beginning of the project, in particular this one, because Freeze Road, because it had such a historic feature to it, so many historic features, it was a different process than virtually every other sure. bridge. We're county. getting a little far afield from the amendment. So it uh, seems to me this this is uh, I'm I'm not sure that you know uh, this is not about the specific bridge. I certainly think that county legislature should not be part of this approval. County staff seems like a reasonable thing. Uh, Jim, we're in the process of trying to vote on something that I'm not going to call on you, uh, Anne. Thanks, Mike. Um, just to reiterate what was already said, the, the state DOT has to review and approve these projects. I don't think the, I, I'm not hearing uh, uh, anything to me convincing that uh, why the county legislature has to approve these. I, and um, so I'm trying to be cautious here of not putting too many people in the middle of this, but John and uh, Jeff from our highway department have spoken on this, that they don't, uh, from what I'm hearing, unless I'm misconstruing, is that they're not seeing that we need to have the final or, or somehow put in some, I don't mean the final, but somewhere in here have approval for these, uh, have a, a yes or a no vote on these approve, uh, for the approve the overall projects. We provide them assistance as needed. Uh, so I, I, I don't see why we should slow down the projects. It, uh, and I don't see why we should, I don't, I don't see an overarching reason why we should have a uh, final say in the projects. Glenn asked Dan if you would you repeat read your amendment. Your amendment, Dean. Sure, I'm going to read the whole resolve, and you'll 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 hear at the end, which is my language, is if that's okay. Resolve on recommendations of the, recommendations of the facilities and infrastructure committee that Tompkins County wants to support local municipalities by reimbursing the local share of five percent of the original grant of the awarded project and up to twenty percent of the total final project cost if the project meets design and other standards approved by both the county and the applicant municipality. 
Are you talking about county highway department or county legislature? Well, I left it a little vague because, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that any decision is um, spelled out so clearly about exactly how it gets approved. Um, that's why I left it vague. It's just that without this, there's no county approval involved at all in the, in the policy. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? Does everyone understand what we're voting for or against? I, I think we should be more specific of who it is that Dan's proposing that is approving this. I think the deliberate vagueness is uh, actually a, a concern. Well, um, I mean, I think there are a lot of decisions that get made that get made on the staff level. And if the county wanted, if the legislature wanted to, could step in and change it without a policy, right? We do this all the time. So I don't know exactly how to spell it out. I don't think there is a really clear way to spell out exactly who will make what decisions. I think by saying, but again, there's nothing in here about the county having any approval rights in this policy at all. And at least this puts the word the county in there. Okay, we're ready to vote on the amendment. Uh, Dave? I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead, sorry to say again. Uh, we're voting on the amendment, on uh, Dan's amendment of those few words to the uh, that result. Are you in favor or opposed? I have to, I have to be opposed to it without a definition of- uh, All right, yes, yes, yes or no. Yeah. Okay, uh, then, uh, then we go to Ann. No. Glenn? No. Dan? Yes. I vote yes. So that uh, amendment fails. Now we're back to the original resolution as proposed. Uh, ready to vote on that? Uh, Dave McKenna? Yes. Ann Corman? Yes. Glenn Morey? Yes. Ann Klein? No. I vote no. That passes three to two. All right. Thank you, Ann, for your work on that. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let's see if we can talk about our committee goals. Uh, actually, let's do the minutes and get them and the budget adjustments and just get them done, then go back to the, and we'll, we'll go through the uh, goals. Uh, can I take a motion for September 16th and October 5th? You want them together or you want them separately? We can go together. Dave, you're moving them together? Yes. And Glenn seconding. Discussion about the minutes. Move in favor. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dave? Yes. Uh, then we go to Ann? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Dan? Yes. I vote yes. Uh, at the bottom, there were some budget adjustments and transfers for information only. Any questions about? Any of those? Okay. Then now we'll go to uh, committee goals to, for review of that. So we were going to do it last time, but we kind of ran out of time. Uh, let's let's just see where we are on each of these. Uh, the first one, first bullet was move the commercial driver's license testing site forward located near the airport so testing can be conducted in Tompkins County. Uh, I just think that that continues to be churning out there. Uh, Lisa, do you have any new information on that at all? Um, I know that the commercial, the, the pad for the testing site was included in the airport's grant submission for the, the New York State uh, funding for the Upstate Airport Initiative funding. Yes. So um, 
and we'll expect to hear more about that probably probably not for uh, not until next summer, I think. So to that extent, I think we've moved that goal forward uh, from where we were at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. since it's now in this uh, grant application. Any other comments on that? Uh, bullet two, update on the trail system in Tompkins County. Uh, including information regarding the approval of permit to run the trail pass game farm. Uh, I think that that's happened. Uh, discussion regarding the trail system and footbridge across Route 13. That's a political issue this fall and other happenings with the trail system countywide. Uh, how would you like to uh, proceed there? Would you like to ask planning to come in and, and give us an update on that? Yes, please. Can we ask planning if they could schedule for our next meeting? Sure. Anything else on, on trails? Look at increasing the number. I I'm sorry, I had my yeah, hand up. Sure. Yeah, on, on Game Farm, um, there's a, I'm looking at this, um, information about the approval of a permit to, to have, is, does this mean to cross from the town of Ithaca onto the, onto the town of Dryden side? And John, I think John was looking at that recently. Is it, that's what that's about? I don't Which know, John? John John Weaver, I don't know if he's looking at the, if he's listening to the meeting anymore. There, there, there was, okay. There was a, um, the, it, there's a, uh, a, an engineering plan for the crossing uh, on Game Farm Road between the town of Ithaca and the town of Dryden, parts of the, the, the trail. Um, so I guess there's, there's, that's still under review. And I don't know where, where that stands, John, or what, if there's, could be an update on that. The town submitted a plan, an engineering plan for a safe for safety uh, mitigations, and it it seems it's unsure. I guess it maybe the committee could get an update next meeting. Yeah, well, if we maybe it'll do planning can uh, can check on that for us too. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Martha. Uh, looking to increasing the number of water fountains in the county buildings to help reduce the use of single use plastics. We had some discussion about that, uh, thanks to uh, Ann Corman uh, and Amanda Champion. Uh, I think facilities was looking at that. Uh, Ann, have you heard any more from that committee no. that was looking at it? No, I haven't. The last was, I think the same was we all heard that Alan was going to get back with us after he did a survey. All right. So Let's uh, maybe next time Arel's in for a meeting, we'll ask about that. Discuss the safety and maintenance checks in buildings and do everything we can to ensure all county buildings are safe. Well, that's a wonderful goal. I, I like it. Uh, have we, how would we want to uh, investigate that? Do we want Arel to talk to, to more about that? Or whose goal was this? Uh, who brought this one up? Was it? Ann, did you bring that one up originally? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. Um, although I want buildings to be safe, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't remember who brought this up. I I know I've thought before about you know right. wanting to know what security we have, but I don't know. Um, I I can speak to this a little bit. We have there's a safety committee of staff in the county and it's um, comprised of uh, Alan from facilities, our health and safety coordinator at the health department, Mark Friebel, um, and they, they together with union representation do um, a check of all county buildings every year and they, they, there's a, a, a form that they use to go through it. So I know that that is done every year and they review it with um, department heads in each facility. So perhaps we could uh, ask Darrell to speak to that too, whether he's reviewed that. 
Sure. Would that, would that make sense? Yep. And, and the, the last bullet, review the accessibility report for county-owned buildings, is that part of that? That's something um, separate. Um, that, uh, Alan did a accessibility report um, a number of years ago now in terms of ADA requirements. Um, so that they could speak to that for sure. All right. Well, maybe we could lump all those, those three things into a, an update for us. Uh, I think probably facilities will be in next meeting. So we could ask them to do that. Yep. Great. Probably have the sign for the Governor D Daniel D. Tompkins building displayed. I think that's happened. Anne, I know you looked at it. Right. I was just, my only concern was that it, I thought it was going to be something more permanent, I guess I would say that it's, uh, it's stickers on, you know, that it's stickers applied to something, but we'll, we'll see how long it lasts. Maybe it'll be more robust than I, than I'm hoping. For the, for the lettering you mean on the sign. Right. Well, at least our goal of having them up is has been met. Uh, now we need to talk about, I guess, the uh, long-term viability of them. Is that right? Sounds right. Okay, review of the new solid waste disposal contract. I think Leo told us we're gonna be doing that next month and the facility upgrade. Discussion of the jail facility. We haven't had any discussion about the jail facility. Uh, what does the co committee want to do there? And I would like to um, keep that as as a goal, because, for instance, some of the my thoughts are, you know, if we're talking about four million possible, you know, has been floated around for improvements. I'd like to, you know, talk with administration and the public safety committee of whether, you know, getting an estimate on, well, if we're going to think about spending that, would we think about what would be the cost of building on the pod that would make, make it a lot safer too? Would we want to invite, you say the public safety committee, you want to invite Rich in to, to talk about what they're doing or do you want to ask facilities about this or where do we want to go with it? Lisa, do you have an idea? Yeah, um, I, I think probably um, both those both those items, having Rich come from public safety as well as having facilities speak to it because what we've, what we've opted to do is move forward with the necessary um, health and safety related upgrades into the maintenance of you know the HVAC systems and so forth while we're determining um, what to do next in terms of pods and so forth because realizing that that's going to take some time um, and the these upgrades are are really needed now so yeah, Mike, we go ahead Dave yeah, the uh, the public safety committee has uh, has looked at this and pretty much decided that with the change in jail population, they want to see how this shakes out over the next two or three years before they invest a lot of money in a new new jail building. Uh, so they're they're basically putting a band aid on it uh, to get by for the time being. Well, it, it's, a, it's one of our facilities, so our committee should be involved with any kind of decision like that, especially if there are maintenance items that really need to be, to be looked at. And I'm not saying that committee is wrong, but uh, I do think we probably ought to have a report from someone, as Lisa has just suggested, maybe from, from multiple people uh, about that. Maybe we could put it on for the December meeting. Uh, and uh, ask uh, if, if Rich was available to come and ask uh, 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 Ralph and and uh, and Lisa certainly uh, about that. Does that make sense for folks to try to move that goal? Yes, yeah. sure. that's fine. 
that, that's also part of the capital capital plan, those improvements. So it's it's timely. Okay. Great. All right. Well, can't say we've met all our goals, but we've uh, we started them. We we've, we've succeeded with a couple of them, and then we're uh, we're well on the way to learning more about some of the other ones. Anything else on goals? Are we ready to adjourn? Let's go to bed. Time. Hands moving it. One second. It. All in favor of adjourning? Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for the members of the public. Uh, thank you, Kathy and Katrina, for your help here in the, in the chambers. See everybody. Thank you.